At New Delhi station, Pandit Nehru's two grandsons carry the ashes of India's lost leader to the special train, which is to take those ashes on their final journey to his family home at Allahabad. Flowers cover the urn and fill the coach. And outside, thousands say their last goodbye to the man who made New Delhi the proud capital it is today. At every station on the 450 mile journey, thousands more are waiting. During his lifetime, the love Nehru inspired in the hearts of the people of India was second only to that they had given to Gandhi himself. Wherever Nehru moved, the crowds gathered from hundreds of miles around. On this, his last journey, they gather again to do him honor, and if they can, to shake his family by the hand. At Allahabad, which means God's town, the urn moves through the streets escorted by Nehru's daughter Indira Gandhi, his grandsons, and Mr. Shastri, the new Prime Minister, leader of the destiny of the millions who once looked to Jawaharlal Nehru to unify them in the first difficult years of India's independence. Mr. Shastri arrived with the urn at Anand Bawan, house of pleasure, the home where Nehru was brought up and whose pleasure he forsook for a harder road. Here the urn is carried to the spot where Gandhi used to sit when he visited the family. Men and women who knew him, who worked with him, who loved him, pay their last respects to the urn. For although Nehru has come home, this is not the end of the journey. The end is at the Sangam, the spot where the Jamuna and Saraswati rivers join the stream of the sacred Ganges, where the ashes are to be scattered on the water. It was Pandit Nehru's own wish. In his will he wrote, I make this request, that my ashes be thrown into the Ganges at Allahabad, to be carried to the great ocean that washes India's shore. <laughs>